Hi, welcome to Speed Trap Consulting's introduction and review of the largest turbocharger that we manufacture and sell to the public. That is the Terminator 67mm turbocharger. Uh, this has been in production now for about a year with some special applications and a great look uh, that's going to be able to work for a much more broad range of uh, uses and different engine types. Uh, as usual, we'll go through our main five points of engine size application, purpose, power level and characteristics, composition of the turbo, and specifications. Uh, what's going to be a little bit different from this particular video is that we're actually going to uh, divulge and post all specifications for the compressor wheel. Uh, usually for a lot of our applications we kind of keep that a little bit under wraps uh, just for our usability reasons and the fact that uh, you know the turbocharger market is highly competitive. In this particular case though, um, 67 millimeters deal with a certain class of uh, racing in terms of drag racing and there are going to be certain rules and regulations that a lot of users have to be able to make sure that they fall within the requirements and so we're going to go ahead and divulge all the specifications from inducer, next inducer, and trim uh, so that uh, owners and potential owners want to, can be able to compare them to their class rules and regulations for their application to see if it works for them. Uh, there's nothing worse than being able to invest in a great turbocharger only to find that if you're going through certain sanctioned events uh, when you go through tech inspection they're not going to be able to allow you uh, for a variety of reasons to be able to go onto the track especially in drag racing uh, simply because of the fact that you're not following uh, within the requirements of that particular class so let's go on with the show here for an engine size application uh, for four cylinder this is going to be for 1.8 to 2.4 liter uh, engines that use a very high volumetric efficiency cylinder head uh, that want to make an upwards of about 800 horsepower. That's about the power level of this particular turbocharger as a single unit. For six cylinder engines, uh, we're looking at more like anywhere from 2.5 to 3.4 cylinder engines uh, that have a very good volumetric efficiency head. This is something that's going to have at least um, a, an upward uh, upgrade in camshaft, uh, a little bit more displacement, uh, a lot more exhaust. Uh, diameter volume that they're going to have anywhere from three to four inch exhaust systems um, uh, and more. For the eight cylinder applications, especially for those that are you know 4.6 liter and higher, uh, challengers, chargers, uh, coyote motors who really want to be able to use a, this in a twin set, uh, this can make about 1500 wheel horsepower um, for these applications. So let's look at the purpose. Let's just be flat out honest here. The purpose of this really is for drag racing and uh, for larger engines, a combination of street and uh, you know time attack and circuit applications. So for those that are within the uh, four to six cylinder category, in the four cylinder category, this is strictly a drag racing turbo. Uh, this is for those that want to be able to uh, utilize a compact space that they've had with a previous Garrett product. Uh, with a similar size uh, compressor cover and housing. Uh, if you notice with this particular one, we're just simply looking at oil cooling uh, as opposed to oil and water, which is what is typical within these turbos. Okay, here. So uh, there's no real need uh, in drag racing to have a ball bearing set simply because of the fact that uh, you're not getting oil temperatures high enough to be able to warrant the use of, of that. Again, uh, for the eight-cylinder application, this is going to be really the ultimate size street turbo uh, in a twin application. So for those that want to be able to become that dyno queen they've always wanted to be, uh, they can do so. Uh, at the same time, if they want to be able to uh, street the car, they can turn boost down just enough to be able to have the car still within control and uh, be able to have a lot of fun with it. For those in a six-cylinder application, uh, we can be able to kind of divulge the fact that uh, for those that are about 3 liters or 3.4 liters uh, they can use this for a time attack or sanctioning event. Uh, it doesn't output so much horsepower in a single application that it would overwhelm the car uh, in which the chassis and suspension is developed for circuit racing or for time attack racing. We'll go ahead and do into the composition. This is as usual a full Garrett product with the exception of a couple of small things. Uh, we stick with Garrett as always because of the fact that these are rebuildable, reusable, reliable and you can still go to your Garrett authorized dealer um, to be able to 
refurbish uh, and repair, of course, depending upon damage, um, you know, the, these turbochargers so that they can be reused over and over again. Uh, this is a Garrett cartridge, as I said before. Um, as a standard, so this is oil cooled uh, using a dash uh, four feed inlet for it uh, and a dash uh, 12 outlet uh, for uh, oil feed and return. This particular one is set as a T3, okay, uh, T3, uh, T31 with a four bolt with it. Uh, there are some changes in sizes uh, that I'll, you know, display later on. But if you notice, this is, and of course, a TO4S compressor cover. And the most important part of it, of course, is our compressor wheel and housing. Even though this is a TO4S compressor cover, uh, please notice how that there is now an encased ported shroud. Uh, a lot of TO4S covers uh, are, do not come with that shroud. Uh, the Terminator comes with this particular machine shroud as a standard, okay? And because of the fact that we know that uh, this particular trouble is going to reach some pretty high rotational speeds and upwards of 120,000 RPMs. Um, the biggest part, of course, with this turbocharger is our 91 pounds a minute, 66.8 millimeter compressor wheel, T6 7075 aluminum. Now, a lot of people say, well, how does this make this different than other billet wheels that you see out there? Uh, what makes this one a bit different than most is the fact that we're using a very high grade aluminum. This type of aluminum is, uh, can take a bit more abuse than most aluminum uh, wheels that are out on the market. And what I mean by abuse is the fact that there are going to be times where uh, some users are not going to have certain filters uh, or screens to be able to block any type of debris with that. Uh, we want to be able to make sure that it can withstand that type of punishment, uh, but more importantly, that they can withstand uh, flex at these high speed RPM uh, conditions. Uh, the one thing we have found with some manufacturers is that after about 35, 40, or even 50 pounds, uh, the type of grade aluminum that they're using unfortunately allows the compressor wheel to actually flex, in which now you have internal contact uh, with the housing, uh, rendering the uh, compressor wheel useless. Uh, we have a philosophy that we feel that we'd rather not have uh, pieces of aluminum or any chips or anything like that uh, go within the rest of the system. Uh, you can always be able to replace uh, a housing and wheel. Uh, so this one is constructed so that even though uh, something may ingest with that or may uh, reach a high rotational speed, it's not going to destroy the turbocharger to a point where it can't be rebuilt and still be reused. As I said, with the composition of this, we're using a standard uh, T3 T31.82 AR housing, but uh, that doesn't mean uh, that there aren't any other alternatives that can be used with that. We're using a 74 millimeter exhaust wheel, 